Hey, how's it going? So I'm going to go ahead and walk you through a bobcat since I don't have, uh, or how to flesh and dry a bobcat. I don't have a stretcher and there were questions, quite a few questions on how to make a stretcher using just a 2x4. Um, so I went on the website and got the uh, bobcat measurements. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and mark this uh, 2x4 uh, and then I'll, what I do is I mark it in half and then I'll run it down my uh, bandsaw. So let me go ahead. I drew the line, ran it through the bandsaw, and cut it in half. So now I have two pieces that are about three quarters of an inch thick. What I do then is I just lay it down on the ground, tip to tip. And now what I do is I measure down my 72 inches, which is the last measurement at the bottom. And then what I do is I'm going to get my T square. Set that to the right width. So right down the middle, 72 inches, it's supposed to be 8 inches, so you'll go over 4. Okay, so I took the measurements, and then what I did is I laid them out side by side, touching at the tip, come down to my last measurement, and then made sure it was the right distance apart, 8 inches. And then I went up to my next mark, and then made the mark Cut the, took the measurement that I'm supposed to have, which is seven and a half inches, cut it in half, and that's the distance to the edge. And then going forward, I had to draw a line, or I made each distance at each mark, and then what I've done is I've drawn the line, and then what I'll do is I'll put the two pieces together again, put it back on the bandsaw, and cut them out. All right, so I'd screwed the two of them together, cut them both at once on the bandsaw, so it was nice and quick. So now I have two, equal halves. And then Okay. So I use a staple gun to fire staples into the leather across the top. I notched out the top and that's why. So now the piece of leather is continuous. I put a piece of leather on one side and then the other to give it the ability to flex and pivot like a hinge. So now that you've got the hinge done at the top of the nose, you need to put your uh, pivot point or your uh, your stretcher pin in. So what I did is I used the leftover pieces of the 2x4, I screwed one side in, and then what I did is I temporarily screwed the other side in, and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a half inch hole for my half inch dowel. Now that that's in place, I just put the dowel in, and I'll glue the top half of it, and then leave the bottom half loose, so that I can pop it in and out to once. So when I use it, I'll take this temporary screw out, and then when I use it, I'll stretch it out and pin it in place, and it locks it to the proper size and shape. What I have here is a bobcat that's been uh, scanned out in the field. Typically, when you roll it up, I like to roll it up with the tail end or the, the hind legs first, and then roll it so that the, the face is on the outside, because the face takes the longest to thaw, as you can see. That. So my the face on this one's still a little frozen. So what I'm doing is just dunk it in the water here and thaw it out real quick. Um, I don't like to get the hide wet, uh, or I like to keep the hide as dry as possible for as much as possible to prevent slippage from the hair. All right, so I got the bobcat on the on the flushing beam here, and I'm just using my knife just real carefully. To go ahead and clean it up. Um, this is one of those. Uh, Knives nice. you can get at a Trapper's Place. It's the uh, Vic the Swiss Army Victor Knox. Um, they're like five dollars each. They're super sharp, so you better be gentle and careful. This is why I suggest you know skinning out a few coyotes so you can practice. Because if you mess up on a coyote, no big deal. You mess up on a bobcat, that's a big deal, right? Because that's holes that you got to sew up. So no reason to create more holes. And you just as you get practice. You learn how hard and how rough you've got to be. But basically, I've already gone through. And when I skinned this bobcat, there wasn't a lot of fat on this thing. So you just go around, get the chunks of fat off, the little thin layers of meat. You don't have to worry about it. They don't, they don't hassle you. But I went through. This one was thumped by a car, so its skull was all cracked. So you have to do that. So now, here's the ear. I turn it inside out, and then what I do is I start working the blade around here between, and I just start working it down, 
peeling it back. And it's just like the skinning part, when you're skinning the thing, trying to get the little type of membrane between the skin and the body. And you'll get that just ever so slightly with the ears. Now, you work your way around and you start pulling it apart just using your thumb and, and your thumbs and pinching it. And you just pull it apart. And if you're not sure, just flip it over and look to make sure you're doing it, you're down that right spot. Because you'll lose a little bit of the edge. So it's starting to drift in on me. Sorry if it's hard to see. So I like to do it on my hand because I can feel how much pressure I'm applying. So all I'm doing is just pushing down, pulling it apart, pull it apart, just pull it apart, just like that. It's hard to see, but you get it pulled apart, it's coming out. Then you can just take your pliers, grab it, pull. Nice and easy. Take your time. There. It just starts coming off. Work it down to the tip of the ear. There. See? So we got, got the back of the ear, and then this is the inside cartilage of the ear. And it just peels apart right down the inside of that seam. Just pull it on down. See, it just pulls right apart. And I'm just, I'm not using more than about five or ten pounds of strength here because I'm just trying to be gentle. Pull it apart. If you feel you're fighting it, then just get your knife back out. And I'm actually at the end here. So, there we go. That's it. Cartilage, ear. Finished ear. Alright, so now I'm going to wash it, give it a good bath, wash it, get it nice and clean brush it, and then I'm going to put it on the stretcher. I'll come back to you. Okay, so I've washed it, I brushed it, then I turned it skin side out and put it over the stretcher, nose on the top, back straight down the middle to the, with, to the tail. The tail's uh, obviously been sliced open and cut down the middle. And then what I'll do is now that dowel I put in at the bottom, I just stretch it out to the proper width, and that dowel locks it in place and holds it proper size until it's dry. As soon as this skin is uh, not ta ta tacky to the touch, um, and I'll, I'll lean it just slightly so that the front legs hang out so you can get the dry under the armpit areas, and then as soon as it's not tacky to the touch, I'll turn it right side out, put the first side out, and then give it a good brushing, and then every few hours or twice a day, I'll come out and keep brushing it just to make the hide look better and better each time. Okay, so it's been about a day and a half and the babka has dried, the skin is uh, completely dried and set, um, and I'm just sitting here brushing it with my fur brush. So now what I do is I just pop the pin out of the uh, stretcher, hold the legs back together and slide it off. Now here in the state of Arizona, Bobcats uh, have to be tagged, so what I'll do is I have to take it down to fishing game. Um, they're a little more appreciative when you take it in when it's already dry. So I'll take it in and get the uh, export tag, and then it's all done. And that's